Good evening, and thank you for joining us for our Alliance Academy informational night. Um, I'm Dr. Chris Watkins. I'm joined by Mr. Anthony Tarantino, Colonel John Rogers, and Captain Gregory Salome. Um, we're going to begin our session by showing you a short uh, five to seven minute video that's going to tell you a little bit about um, our different programs here uh, that we offer at Alliance. And then we're going to open up to a question and answer session. Um, anytime during the video, any questions you have, you can type them in the chat box on the right and we each will be answering those. And then when the video is done, we will tell you some more about ourselves as well as about Alliance Academy and address any um, questions good for the group that come in the chat. Thank you. My name is Jack Rogers. In this video, we'll give you a brief introduction of our program. And uh, if you're at all interested in uh, flight operations, being a pilot or a number of other careers, um, please check this out. We have a pretty amazing program here. My background, I'm retired Air Force, military pilot, flew fighters for about 26 years. Then I became a science teacher. And uh, then when I heard about Alliance Academy, I said, this is too good to be true. And so I've been involved with the program for about three years now. And uh, it is just amazing. So uh, a little bit about what the program includes. We have uh, about 20 advanced FAA flight simulators you can see behind me. These are uh, desktop. You'll, our students fly those quite a bit. <clears throat> Over here, we also have two very uh, uh, advanced uh, widescreen um, flight simulators that have much more sophisticated visual system. We have a fleet of drone aircraft. This is a Mavic Air. Uh, you can see we also have some more advanced aircraft. This is the uh, DJI Inspire 2. And uh, we also fly, uh, this is our starter drone. This is a Stinger 240. Uh, our students uh, in the first year of the program do quite a bit of, of drone flying and uh, how we have had several students who have already gotten their FAA 107. So uh, we learn the basics of uh, all about being a pilot and the knowledge and the skills you need to know. You spend a lot of time on flight simulators, developing cross check, using checklists and that sort of thing. Um, and uh, then we switch over and we fly drones for a while. We learn all the FAA regulations. We learn about weather. We have a weather station here on uh, the roof of our building here at Alliance. And uh, the students that you'll be working with in this program are just uh, top notch, uh, cannot be. They're just amazing. So uh, at the end of our program of the flight operations, at the end of the three year pathway, the students all take the FAA Private pilot written exam, and that is the end of pathway assessment. Greg Salome retired from the airlines after 30 years of service prior to that, a bush pilot in Alaska. And as Colonel Rogers pointed out a few moments ago, I do uh, teach flight ops, aerospace here at the academy, as well as aviation maintenance. Our aviation maintenance program, we are in our second year, is located in the far end of the class agency. And we are in the process of building a home-built airplane as part of the curriculum for our students. They're excited about it, they're motivated by it, and uh, we look forward to having the plan completed probably next year. And that it is a process that takes some time to get, to get completed. So, our students are excited about uh, being here, as Colonel Rogers mentioned, and I hope to see them follow through in the years to come. to offer this year our distribution logistics pathway is a three course pathway that involves logistics fundamentals, logistics operations, and materials management will be the third course. Students have been actively engaged in our first course. You know, we're learning about the history of logistics and supply chain management. We really look to examine how things in the world affects goods and services and the exchange of those. 
Um, we look at the different innovations. What we really like the most about where this pathway can go, and we hope to have you join this pathway, is that the overall supply chain management logistics is an ever-growing field, um, especially here in the Metro Atlanta area. We'd like to think that our students um, that complete this pathway are going to be actively engaged and ready to step into the workforce, and or when they go to college, are going to be more prepared if this is a journey they choose to follow um, after high school and get involved in the logistics and um, environment in their field moving forward. Our students, and it's an inclusive classroom and really love the leadership of a number of students that we have here within our classroom. They see themselves as a family. Um, they like to bounce ideas off of each other. They're able to bring in their real world examples. Many of them do currently have jobs within the workforce and they're able to come in and tell us about you know how issues within the supply chain has affected them at their current place of employment. Our students within our pathway are actively engaged in Skills USA. Um, Skills USA is one of our biggest CTSOs here at Alliance Academy. They go on a number of competitions. They have opportunities to move up within leadership positions within that CTSO. And again, we try to relate all that back here to our distribution and logistics pathway. We hope to have you come and enjoy join us. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me. Um, at, I am Dr. Chris Watkins from Alliance Academy of Innovation. And we hope to have you join us here in the future. Thank you. All right, we will now open the floor to questions. Um, feel free to just ask any of the questions over in the chat box. Um, and while you're beginning to ask those questions, uh, I'm going to have Colonel Rogers as well as Captain Sloan tell you a little bit about themselves as well as their program. Um, and I'll actually, uh, myself, uh, Dr. Chris Watkins, um, was excited to begin our logistics pathway this year. Um, my background, uh, I'm a former high school administrator as well as teacher. Um, a couple different schools as well as basketball coach and I run a business outside um, of Alliance Academy. So try to again bring those real world business examples to the classroom. Um, but I am, you know, we're very fortunate to have two extremely gifted and experienced teachers and Captain Salam as well as Colonel Rogers. So I'll let um, uh, Captain Salam, if you'd like to go first, tell them a little bit about yourself and your background. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Um, Background started as a pilot, started flight training at age 12, got my pilot's license at age 17, and started as a commercial pilot at age 18 up in Alaska flying the bush. Did that for about nine years. Uh, pretty exciting stuff up there in the Alaska range and uh, wheels, floats, skis. Uh, after that came to uh, Georgia in 1987, got on with the airlines and uh, spent 30 and yeah, almost 31 years with the airlines almost 30,000 hours in flight retired and uh came to alliance last year and i'm glad to be here and look forward to teaching uh the students as best i can in both aviation maintenance and aviation uh flight operations and uh, it's a good program and i look forward to again having the students uh stay with us So, hi, this is uh, uh, Jack Rogers. I'm the uh, other aerospace teacher. Um, I actually started the program about three years ago. Um, I was an Air Force pilot for 26 years. I'm a retired colonel. Uh, most of my career I spent in the F-16 program, which was a, a, a real um, honor and a real privilege to be able to do that. Um, uh, one thing about being in the F-16 program early on was uh, pretty much everybody in the program was just amazing. Um, so all 26 years that I was in the military, um, I really had the privilege of working for some pretty working with some pretty incredible folks. Um, I retired after 26 years. I was uh, um, uh, spent uh, several years flying the A-10. I was uh, fortunate enough to command an A-10 squadron in Korea um, and uh, flew the A-10 for about three years. Um, I flew a few other aircraft as well. Most of my time though was in the F-16. Um, 
So I retired uh, in 2005, and at that point, I decided I would become a uh, science teacher. I have a background in physics and math, uh, and so I uh, started teaching, and I've taught uh, uh, high school physics and also middle school science for several years. And after I'd done that for several years, I said, OK, that's enough. I think I'm, I'm ready to ease into retirement. And about the time I was uh, about to call it quits, I got wind about Alliance Academy and I heard about the aerospace aviation program uh, there. And I thought, wow, that is that is such a neat thing. Uh, and that sounds like something that would be really, really interesting to do. So long story short, I wound up uh, getting involved in the program and setting the program up at the very beginning. And I've been involved now. This is the third year that I've been involved in it. And our, we will graduate our first uh, pathway completer class this year. Um, and uh, the students, that's that's the, the best thing for me personally about this program is the students are, are they're just so motivated and they're so impressive and uh, they're, they're just great, great students. They're talented and uh, um, I'll single out. I have one of my students. We we fly drones um, in the course, uh, and two years ago we we started flying our drone program, and one of my students uh, really took to it very very well. And after flying the drones in the program for a couple of months, she uh, decided this was something she was interested in. She went and uh, arranged to take the uh, Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA's drone uh, remote pilot operator test, which she passed. And so she now has her FAA remote pilot certificate, which is called your 107. And then as soon as she got her 107, which is uh, gives her the right to operate unmanned aircraft in a commercial uh, setting, she started her own company. And so she is now does wedding drone video and real estate drone video. She's a, she's amazing. She's actually getting real close to getting her pilot's license and she's pretty typical. I have, I think I'm up to four students now that have completed their, uh, their 107. And uh, I have two students that have soloed out and a couple more that are getting pretty close to solo. And I think shortly after the new year, I'll have probably two, two of my third year students that have, have completed and they're, they'll have their private pilot's license. So um, I will mention briefly that in Alliance, we do not provide the flight instruction. It would be great if we could. Um, uh, but because of the expenses and a lot of logistics issues, um, it's just not something that we're able to offer. Um, so students that are pursuing that are doing that uh, independently of Alliance and at their own expense. But I have at least five students now who are actively involved in flight training. And uh, because of the ground school that they get at Alliance, as well as uh, a lot of time on flight simulators. Um, it really, really gives them a leg up when they're in their flight training. So students are amazing and uh, it's 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 quite a lot of fun to uh, to work with these kids. Mr. Tarantino, do you want to take a minute or two kind of address some of those common questions that we generally get about Alliance Academy, maybe our programs, our schedule, CTSOs, anything of that nature? Sure. Thank you, Dr. Watkins. So one of the most common questions we have is, is really about transportation. You know, if I apply out of district, how do I get to Alliance if I take the bus? And the answer to that is really something very simple. Um, what the student would do is they hop on the bus like they would normally go to their base school. So let's say a student would attend Lambert High School normally. They would jump on the bus like they're going to Lambert. When they get to Lambert, they get off of that bus and there's a second bus that they'll get on that'll then actually take them to Alliance Academy. And when they arrive to Alliance, they usually get there around 840 or so. They're able to come in, eat breakfast, and then go to class. It starts at nine o'clock. In the afternoon, they do just the reversal. They get on a bus from Alliance go back to Lambert High School, get off that bus, get on a new bus from Lambert, and then go home. 
parents are also able to drop off students starting at 8 o'clock and they can pick up students starting at 3.05 in the afternoon. Uh, another common question we have is about the application and the timeline. The out of district application is actually open now. It'll run, it'll be open through January 4th. So if you're interested in applying, do so now. Um, normally, in, in, every year we, we have about 550 to 600 applicants. This year we do uh, expect that we'll have a record setting number of applicants. So please get in your application, get it in early. We look at grades, attendance, and behavior. Um, again, as long as you're passing your classes and you're going to school and you haven't had any kind of major behavior issues, you will be granted a lottery number. And then we will have the lottery in January. It is a true lottery type system where we put everyone's number in a hopper, we spin it, and we pull the numbers and they go in order. We, and, and we expect we'll have about 300 applicants that we uh, go ahead and grant admission to. And then we have a waiting list. And then as the student decides that you know, their parents move or they decide alliance wasn't right for them, whether it's for sports or band or drama, uh, then we go down the waiting list. Uh, this is going to be our first graduating class that we have this year. We already have students that have been accepted to you know, schools such as Auburn and UGA, uh, the Air Force Academy. Um, so students that do attend Alliance Academy are very competitive with everybody else within the district. Um, and are able to, to get out get their name out there and attend some really top notch colleges. Um, uh, one of the questions we have here, what are some of the colleges these seniors are applying to? Again, um, any school you can normally think of, a traditional school that they would apply to, those are what our kids are going to and our kids are getting in uh, really left and right. Um, out of I think 25 students that applied to UGA, we had 24 get accepted. So that's, that's a pretty good ratio from the kids that we have. Uh, another question we have right now are what are the class ratios, student to teacher? Um, in our CTSO classes, which are our pathway classes, we normally run about you know, 1 to 20, 1 to 25 is, is the ratio in there. Uh, in our core classes, those classes can be a little bit larger simply because uh, of space and the number of teachers that we have. Um, so those are some of the more popular type questions that we have. And again, audience, please feel free to ask in the chat we will answer them as best that we can as they come across thank you dr watkins so this is uh, mr rogers we've we've had a, a student get a congressional appointment to the coast guard academy in the aerospace pathway uh, we've had a student get accepted to auburn in their aviation program and we just had a student also get accepted into the embry riddle aviation program so we're off to a pretty good start with our pathway completer seniors this year. OK, we just had a question on can you share the percentage of AP test scores? Uh, I'm not exactly 100 percent sure what you're asking. Um, really, it's going to depend on what AP subject you are trying to take. If you want to log on to our website, we do have a general presentation that has some really specific AP information in there. I will say that our students um, were very competitive with the other high schools. We actually beat them in, in some categories. Um, we don't like to, to glow too much on that. But right now we have over 700 students who are currently taking, I believe, over a thousand different AP tests for, for this May. Um, whatever that may look like, obviously, again, due to COVID and everything else. So the, the percentage of students that take AP classes is actually very, very high at Alliance Academy. Um, and what they score on the AP exam, again, it all depends on what the AP exam is and which, which subject it lines up to. If you want to ask a specific question in the chat, I, I can try to answer that. But that's, that's more of some, some general information regarding AP classes. So uh, Colonel Rogers and Captain Salome, um, can you guys take us through a, a sample day uh, of a student in your pathway? What does that sample day look like? Well, this is uh, Captain Salome. Uh, typical day is my 
fundamentals class, they are wide eyed and ready and eager to learn about aviation. They start off with fundamentals, which are parts of the aircraft, uh, aviation weather, charts and navigation. And then uh, we get into, as Colonel Rogers mentioned earlier, we get into the drones and we get into uh, simulator operations. And from there, they progress into a flight ops one, which is a more advanced class, and uh, they learn more advanced uh, courses with the fundamentals of simulator operation, again, the uh, drones. But uh, Colonel Rogers takes it to another level, which is the flight operations number two. And I'll let uh, Colonel Rogers uh, take it from there and uh, describe his flight ops two class. Yeah, so uh, in flight op in fundamentals and in uh, flight ops one, we we cover an awful lot of the territory that you need to know for uh, being a pilot, and uh, also you know aerospace engineering, air traffic control, um, and uh, so at the end of the second year, uh, students have have spent a lot of time in the simulator. They understand the concepts of how simulators are driven by checklists um, and how you use the checklist. They, they're beginning to develop some pretty good uh, cross-check uh, habit patterns in terms of you know, maintaining your altitude and your heading and your airspeed. Uh, they have a pretty good understanding of the basic aerodynamics. And so, but at the end of the second year, there we've we've covered um, a pretty pretty wide um, thing of the territory. Uh, we've covered weather. We've covered uh, the details of how to do flight planning for a flight from point A to point B, and so on and so forth. Which leads us as we as we move into the third year of the program, uh, the end of pathway assessment for the third year is a is the students actually will sit and take the FAA's private pilot written test. Um, this is a real, no kidding, uh, if you're going through flight school and you are getting your private pilot, this is the test that you would take uh, as part of the process of getting your, pri your pilot's license. Um, so that is what uh, the Georgia Department of Education has defined as our end of pathway assessment. Um, so, uh, that's a pretty high stakes test. It's 60 questions, multiple choice. Um, the FAA tests um, how to put this delicately. Uh, the FAA is not a nice organization when it comes to making tests. These tests are tough. Uh, they are in the weeds. Uh, they really, you really, you can't just walk in with a general knowledge and pass this test. You really, really got to prep up for it. You got to get down into the footnotes and the details, federal aviation regulations, the weather, aerodynamics, flight planning, lots and lots of stuff. So in order to make sure that our students are really ready to roll so that in the spring they, they sit and pass that test, the majority of the time in this third year pathway is going through step by step, block by block, getting our students ready to successfully pass that FAA test. Um, it's probably the hardest year of the program. Um, as I mentioned, the FAA tests, uh, they make them tough. Um, they, uh, it sounds like 60 questions, multiple choice, three options, and all you got to make is a 70. That doesn't sound like that's tough, but they, they can make these questions really confusingly worded. And uh, so you really got to know your stuff to pass these tests. So that's pretty much the third year. Now we still do a lot of flight simulators and we still do a lot of drones when the weather permits, but the, the primary focus for the third year is getting ready for that test. So um, it's, uh, it's by far the hardest year of the three years. Another common question that we end up receiving from a lot of students and families is whether or not students can take two pathways at the same time. The answer to that question is it really depends on the student and what their schedule looks like. Um, almost every student their sophomore year will have room to take two separate pathways. 
some students when they enter Alliance Academy will have room to take two pathways, but that really depends on whether or not they've taken the health and PE um, requirement over the summer on their own. If they do take that course when they enter ninth grade, they will be able to start two pathway classes as a freshman. While you're at Alliance, you do have plenty of time in your schedule to fully finish two pathway classes. So what we like to encourage students to do is to really pick two areas they're interested in or two areas that really complement themselves. Um, we've got students that'll do something like aerospace, uh, they'll do flight operations, and they'll also do maintenance, or they'll do flight operations and they'll do something along the lines of, of, of marketing, um, simply because maybe they want to buy and sell aircraft. So there's lots of different variations you can do at Alliance Academy. We really want you to explore the different career opportunities you have out there. Uh, because really we want you to figure out what your vision of success is and we want to help you reach that.